A reminder about some programme changes tonight. Replacing the advertised episode of Magnum at 8 o'clock, there'll be a TVI special report on the Libyan crisis, followed at half past eight by an episode of Freshfield with Anton Rogers and Julia McKenzie. But now, let's enjoy some sun and fun which comes duty free. <laughs> David? Not yet. You're not flicking your ash on those people below, are you? No. What are you doing? I'm looking at the sea. Haven't you seen enough of it? Well, I never get tired of looking at the sea. Well, it's only water, David. How can you say that? It's like a mirror out there. No white horses tonight, Amy. No white horses? You usually say waves. What's the matter? Didn't you, uh, didn't you enjoy this evening? Oh, wasn't it a lovely evening? I thoroughly enjoyed it. In fact, it was a perfect evening in almost every respect. Of course, there was the atmosphere, but apart from that... What atmosphere? Oh, it was nothing, David. I shouldn't have mentioned the atmosphere. Why spoil the evening? Was there an atmosphere? Didn't you notice how silent Robert became? Oh, yes, but I just thought it was a comfortable silence. How do you know that? How do I know about what? Well, you've only known him for a few days. How do you know whether his silence was comfortable or uncomfortable? Uh, yes, well, you know Robert. I mean, he puts words together like uh, somebody threading beads. Well, he didn't thread many beads tonight, did he? I think he was brooding. Why was he brooding? No idea. Why do you keep touching her all the time? Who? Oh. Linda. Well, I don't. It was very noticeable. You're becoming quite a toucher these days. Your eyesight isn't failing, is it? <laughs> Nothing wrong with my eyesight. Are you sure? You kept running your hands over her like blind pew. Oh. <laughs> that was so ridiculous. Well, Robert noticed. I think he could turn quite ugly if he was crossed. Oh, Robert. Do you think so? Oh. <laughs> the way he kept opening and closing those big hands, I think he could become very jealous. And the trouble is, she flirts with everybody. No, she doesn't. I think she's a nymphomaniac. <laughs> what are you talking about? She's nothing of the sort. How do you? No, just because you haven't met one doesn't mean to say they don't exist. They're rare, like the white rhino. Poor Robert, what he's got to put up with. And I think he'd do anything to keep the woman he loves. Even murder. Murder? Do you love me, David? Well, of course I do. No, there's no of course about it. How much? How much? Well, you can't measure love, though. You certainly can't measure yours, David. Well, I love you, uh, desperately. Yes, that's what I thought. In, uh, in every way. Would you die for me? Is that necessary? <laughs> I mean, suppose there were six-foot waves out there and I was in the middle of them, being tossed about like a cork, screaming, David, David, save me. What would you do? How high did you say the waves were? How high? Six foot. Would you dive in and save me? Well, wait a minute, Amy. I'm not a very strong swimmer these days. You're you know. not a very strong swimmer. I'm drowning and you're heavy. Now, what would you do? Oh, I'd form a chain. You'd what? Yeah, I'd line up all the holidaymakers, form a chain, and then move steadily out into the water. So that's it. I'm drowning, and you'd organize a chain. Well, I suppose it's one way to meet people. Well, it uh, doesn't mean I don't love you, love. I just believe in keeping a clear head. Oh, above water. Clear head above water. Oh. You certainly do, chain maker. Hey, suppose I drowned. Would you be grief-stricken? Oh, of course I would, love. I'd be absolutely uh, <laughs> grief-stricken. Would you be very upset at the funeral? Oh, terribly upset. Would you weep? Well, I suppose so. Would you throw yourself on the coffin with great racking sobs and scratch at the lid and groan, too late, too late? <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> would you marry again? <laughs> 
Marry again? Well, I don't know. Well, of course, there'd be the children that could say that. Oh, yes, of course, there would be the children. Would you wait six months? Oh, I, I wouldn't marry as quickly as that. It'd be uh, indecent. What about a year? What? No, don't answer that, David. I think I'll settle for six months. Look, uh, do we have to have this morbid conversation? I mean, we're on holiday. Do we have to talk about death all the time? Hey, we're going to the ta-da, the bullfight tomorrow. Well, I'm glad you're looking forward to it, because I'm not. Why did you say we'd go with them? Well, I don't know. Well, it was just that Linda wants... Oh, and Robert wants to go with somebody who uh, knows the ropes. Well, you don't know the ropes. You'll probably be sick. We should stop talking like that, you know. People would think we've never been anywhere. Oh, well, we haven't. <laughs> yes, well, they... They think we've been to a bullfight. Now, how could we have been to a bullfight? We haven't even been to Spain before, and they certainly don't have them in Northampton. How did they get that impression? Well, I don't know why. Well, I just happened to be discussing the uh, finer points that they seemed to assume it. Did they, really? Yes, it was the... Af I think I'll clean my teeth. David? Yes? Oh, nothing. David, if I was in this field and this bull was charging towards me and I was shouting for help... Oh, no, not again. <laughs> what are you drinking? Oh, uh, a pittance. Oh, good. Just what I need. You have to do that. I have to make myself beautiful for tomorrow, Robert. Never mind tomorrow. What about tonight? Why, is someone coming? No, I don't think so. Well, not, not at this time. I'm talking about me, Linda. I'm here. Well, yes, of course you're here, Robert. I can see that. And I'm doing this for you. Don't you want your wife to look beautiful? Well, yes. Look at the trouble I'm going to. Olive oil, lemon, cucumber, nothing synthetic. All God's gifts, just for you. And don't forget we're going to the bullfight tomorrow. I must look my best. Oh, wouldn't it be wonderful if the matador dedicated his bull to me? No, it wouldn't. We'd never get it home, Linda. <laughs> and if we did, it'd be too big for the deep freeze. It's a <laughs> gesture, Robert. David was explaining it to me. Oh, yes. What's the matter? Aren't you looking forward to it? What a bunch of dagos baying for blood, throwing cushions in the air. I should think not. That's because you don't understand it. David's going to explain it to us. Oh, is he? Don't you uh, think you've been seeing rather a lot of David these days? Robert, you're not jealous. Well, of course not. Seen the state of his shoes. <laughs> then there is cuffs. Cuffs? Cuffs. Frayed. Caught in the other day, trimming them with a pair of nail clippers. <laughs> Poor devil, he seems to have been in a state of deterioration ever since he arrived. I think it must be the heat. It can have a very strange effect on people. What do you mean? Oh, you. You seem to have changed since you've been here. Hardly spoke to me at dinner. I mean, it's even as if there was someone else. Someone else? How could there be? Who could possibly compete with you, Robert? Look around you and what do you see? A bunch of foreigners and a man with frayed cuffs. <laughs> yeah, I suppose you're right. You're not enjoying it here, are you, Robert? No, too many Germans. <laughs> and all that singing in the bar, what are they trying to prove? They're only singing, Robert. Yes, I think they're trying to raise Hitler. Oh, no, not Hitler. <laughs> we would have done much better at Bournemouth. You were different there. There is something the matter. What is it? Well, to tell you the truth, Linda, I was rather hoping that you might be feeling a bit... a bit... A bit what? You know, <laughs> fruity. Fruity? I thought you were going to say something romantic. Oh, but Linda... When you start word spinning, it takes the breath away. Here we are in this exotic paradise with the guitars playing and the sound of cicadas on the night air, and you feel fruity. Well, if you don't feel so fruity, have a lemon. Where's Robert? Oh, he's in the bar, bracing himself for the ordeal. I don't think he's very keen on bullfights. The sight of blood usually makes him queasy. Really? It's still surprising. Poor Robert. I would never have guessed. Doesn't worry you, then? No, no, no. I hardly notice it. Mind you, I am more interested in the cape work. Oh. And do you know who's fighting today? El Macho, the man. Yeah. He's got quite a following. I'm really looking forward to, uh, to studying his style. I think I should be terrified. No, 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 you won't, Linda. Just look on it as a as a pageant, as a sort of ballet. But don't you feel sorry for the bull? 
No, you... You must not consult me with a bone lender. Just remember the man alone in that arena with a thousand pounds of aggressive, malevolent arm and muscle bearing down on him. And the only thing between him and sudden death is his skill with the cape. Or a mulatto, as we aficionados like to call it. I don't seem to know a great deal about it. Well, it's, it's just something that's always appealed to me. I don't know if life had been different, it might have been me out there today. El uh, Gringo, the foreigner. You see, I've always been fascinated by cold courage, the moment of truth. El Toro. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> the, um, the, the hushed silence of the bullring, the matador looks up, catches the eye of a beautiful woman, and raises his sword and dedicates the bull to her. Dead. El Toro comes nearer. The woman watches, a heart in her mouth, a face pale, a cry of fear, a sudden thrust. And the bull lies dead at his feet. Deadly. <laughs> Dedicated to the woman he loves. Oh, David, that's lovely. Oh, hello, Amy. David was just describing the bullfight. I didn't realize he was an aficionado. Didn't you? Yeah, he's the biggest aficionado around <laughs> And two whiskies and soda and no ice, if you'll be so kind. Are you feeling better now, David? Oh, much better. Thank you, Linda. Oh, it must have been those, those tortillas we had at lunchtime. I thought it might have been the sight of all that blood. No, that didn't worry me. Then why did you disappear? I keep telling you, I didn't disappear. I just wandered off for a while because I was... because I was bored. Bored? Better bored than gored. Yes. El Macho was a disappointment. He's, he's lost his touch. Oh, it wasn't anything like I expected. He wasn't like you expected? Well, he was exactly what I expected. It's the same result every week. Matadors three, bulls nil. <laughs> but El Macho was almost gored. Didn't you see that, David? How could he see it? He was throwing up behind the stand. I was not. Have a drink, David. Settle the stomach. Look, there's, there's nothing wrong with my stomach. It's just that... The must... tortillas. Yes, the tortillas. Oh, yes. You went very pale in there. I got quite worried about you. Oh, no. He was just bored, that's all. He always goes that colour when he's bored. Well, of course, David appreciates the finer points. I found that when he'd explained it to me, I enjoyed it much more. Well, it's a pity he didn't explain it to the bull. He might have enjoyed it as well. <laughs> You'd have loved to have been a bullfighter, wouldn't you, David? David! <laughs> well, I just happened to mention that it was a childhood ambition of mine. Oh! Yes, I can just see you. El Blanco, the white one, <laughs> disappearing behind the stands. Now, you see, Emmett, you, you don't understand. I wasn't interested. Now, to the, to the untrained eye, it may have looked like a daring display, but El Macho was playing to the crowd. <laughs> it was Conninger. But he was almost gorged. Oh, he may have looked like that, Linda, but well, he wasn't standing close to the ball. He was closer than you were. <laughs> look, uh, look, I'll show you. Could you... Uh, oh, just, just lift your glasses, will you, please? Amy, glass, up. Oh, thank you. Now, you see, he was, he was leaning forward like this, like this, so that when the bull charged, he had all this room to move back without, without in fact moving his feet, you see? It was a con. Excuse me, senor, but uh, that is not quite right. Huh? Now, do you mind, show me, do you mind? I'm just explaining something here to my friends. Would you just please stand aside? You see, of course, now, what he should but, have done... But, uh, senor... Now, please, <laughs> please, do you mind? Of course, you see... Of course, what he should have done, he should have achieved total mastery of the bull, allowing it to pass close to the body, and allowing him to make use of the more intricate passes, such as the, uh, oh, the, uh, oh, the rondolero and the pendulo, you see? Senor, if, if I may. Now, look. Look. Just stop bothering me, please. But, senor, if you'll allow me just for a moment. <laughs> what is it? That is not correct. This is how it is done. Hey, Toro, Toro! Hey, Toro! Hey! Yes, I know. <laughs> That's what I was doing. Now, could I have my tablecloth back, please? Thank you. <laughs> Did you see that? What does it think he is? Macho, David. <laughs> It'll be rather cold with sunny intervals and 
Recent surveys report that on average we eat only two-thirds of the fiber we should each day to help keep us fit and healthy. Funnily enough, a single bowl of one breakfast cereal provides the 10 grams of fiber to make up that missing third. Kellogg's All Bran. It can make all the difference. The wood in your home is potentially its most beautiful attribute. So don't conceal it. Ron seal it in matte, satin, gloss, or wood shades. Ron seal lets the natural beauty of the grain shine through. Its tough resins protect it and keep it beautiful for years to come. So if you want to make the most of the wood in and around your home, don't conceal it. Ron seal it. Are you careful about what you eat? I eat my Vita. Really? I eat wholemeal bread. But my Vita is wholemeal. Oh. Wholemeal bread, around 70 calories a slice. Wholemeal rye Vita, 26 calories a slice. Looks like rye Vita can help you in the inch war. Oh. Edwin P. Leeds announce a real breakthrough from Philips. It's a complete compact disc system with record player, stereo radio, twin cassettes, and compact disc. Yet another sensation from Philips. And the price, just $329.95. Experience it tomorrow at Edwin P. Lee's. There's a branch near you. Look us up in yellow pages. Choose your new Barrett house now and move in the spring. Just think, more space, more style, central heating and our highest specification. Whatever your needs, the Barrett Premier Collection provides the answer. Luxury fitted kitchens, beautiful bedrooms, spacious stylish living rooms, and remember just a hundred pounds secures and fixes the price. Ring Barrett now for locations and details about our house exchange scheme, or see our premier collection show houses at developments throughout the Northwest. Just haul up all those legs at once and go out jogging all through lunch. Fix that computer, walk the dogs. Oh, my back. Relax in a warm Radox bath with a unique blend of herbs and mineral salts. He's terribly handsome, isn't he? So distinguished. Do you think so? They all look like bloody waiters to me. Ah. <laughs> How can you say that? Well, I don't like the way it's looking over here. David, will you hurry up and finish your drink? We get back to the hotel and have dinner. Yes, I suppose you're right. What's on the menu? Beef. Now, I think you're doing that deliberately. Have another drink, David. It'll help you to forget. I wonder why he keeps staring at me. Because you keep staring at him. For God's sake, don't encourage him. Blighter looks full of vino to me. Well, I shan't speak to him. He's got blood on his hands. Has he? <laughs> well, that's all I need. I was talking symbolically. Well, look, Amy, David. don't get symbolic. Let's just get out of here. Oh, watch out, watch out. He's coming across. Ah, buenas tardes, senoras. Senores, uh, you have been to the corrida, see? Si? Oh, see. Si. Good. Then you drink with El Uh No, I don't think so. The son can't stay. You've got to get back to the hotel. Hotel? Oh, which hotel? Oh, uh, the San Remo. San Remo? Ah, where is San Remo? Italy. Melbourne. <laughs> oh, you must know the San Remo. It's down on the beach. Ah, see, si, yes, yes, I know it. Uh, yeah, the balconies there are very easy to climb, eh? I hear those balconies are here to be here. You try climbing our balcony, amigo, they'll be scraping you off the patio. <laughs> Please, we must be sociable. I mean, it's a marvelous experience meeting El Macho. We thought you were wonderful this afternoon. Ah, gracias. Uh, Aficionados, eh? Oh, see, si, aficionados, and we thought you were magnifico. Such style, such elegance, such poise. Oh, ah, gracias. Then I have something for you, senora. <gasps> oh, my he's, God. He's cut his ear off. It's the balls. No, I don't think we need this, old bean. I mean, you see, we, we don't uh, have them in England. We wouldn't know where to put it. Oh, nonsense, Robert. Oh. An ear, a bull's ear given to me by a macho. Oh. Just think what stories we'll have to tell when we get back to Henley. And you, Signor? Uh, not for me, thank you very much. I'm trying to give them up. Pardon? Oh, I don't want his ear or any other part of his anatomy. Oh, my God, what's that? Oh. <laughs> 
it's all right, David. It's only a cheroot. The Signora uh, does not approve of me, eh? No, I do well, not. No, no, not, not exactly. And you will not drink with El Macho? No, I will not drink with you. You have blood on your hands. Now, Amy, look, you're getting symbolical again. Uh, no, no, she didn't mean that. Oh, yes, I did. I think that bullfighting is barbaric. Barbaric? Barbaric? Cruel and vicious. <laughs> but I am an artist. You're not an artist. You're a hitman for Frey Bentos. Oh, <laughs> You felt sorry for El Toro, eh? But he is bred to fight, and he loves to fight. Do you mean he enjoys it? <laughs> See. Si. Well, until that ball comes through that door and slams your ear down on the table, I refuse to believe it. <laughs> you are insulting me. No, 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 no. She isn't insulting oh, you. Yes, I am. You insult me, and you will not drink with El Macho, eh? In case. David, did you see that? He did this. What does that mean? Well, I don't know, but it, I think it means we're going to have endless bad luck. Yeah, well, I think it's just started. No, no, we've got to throw it back to him. I'm not throwing anything back to him. Well, I will. Ah, so you insult me again, eh? Listen, Signora, if you were a man... You just be careful, El Macho. I'm not a woman alone. I have my husband with me. Now, I, not, I may not be a man, but he is, and he will not stand by and see me insulted. Amy, Amy, I think you'd better apologise. I'm not going to apologise, David. And if you don't like it, El Macho, you'll have my husband to recommend. Look, Amy, these men have just killed three bulls. They can still smell blood. Ours. Look, I, I, I must apologise for these, Signora. Too much vino, I'm afraid. Don't you apologise for me, you coward. Stand up to You me. just bump your lip, Amy. <laughs> You must forgive my friend. She just doesn't understand bullfighting, the pageantry, the artistry. I thought you were super. Ah, Signora, you understand. You are simpatica. And I kiss your hand. Stereo, old son. You simmer down. And you? What did you think of the bullfight, Signora? Oh, the fight? Well, actually, I didn't see really very much of it. I've got a funny tummy, you see. I think the tortillas were just a bit off. Amy? He hey. thought you stank. Stank? Oh, yes. Stank! <laughs> How's your stomach, David? Oh, not very good. What was that soup we had tonight? Oxtail. No, I shan't tell you again about that. It wasn't my idea to go to the bullfight. Well, it wasn't that that caused this. I think I've got an ulcer. Well, you must be very satisfied with yourself, that's all. Me? Yes, you, the way you behaved in that bar, do you realise you could have involved Linda in a very ugly incident? Linda? What about me? I was involved. I was in danger, and all you could do was make for the door. I had to get Linda out of there. I didn't like the way that that L macho was looking at her. No, I bet you didn't. It's marvellous, isn't it? I give you one chance, one chance to prove that you love me, and all you can do is think of Linda. Oh, <laughs> so that's it is. I should have known. That's what all this is about. You wanted me to prove I love you by getting my teeth knocked out. Well, I've told you I'm not a man of action. Yes. Oh, see. Who? Oh. <laughs> Linda, it's Linda. <laughs> Sorry? Oh, are you sure? Well, look, don't, uh, don't panic, Linda. It could just be a shadow. I'm on my way down straight away. No, 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 no Linda, don't be frightened. David's coming. <laughs> David's coming where? Well, Linda says she's seen something or somebody on a balcony. It's probably that matador. Well, whatever it is, she sounded thoroughly alarmed. Why? Is he getting away? There's no need to take that attitude. David, why doesn't she ring reception? Because they can never understand a word that you say. Look, I must now, go and... Now, don't be silly, David. Can't you see? It's just a ruse to get you to go there. Amy, she's alone, she's frightened, and Robert is drinking in the bar. I must go. Right, I'll go with you. Oh, no, 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 it, uh, could be dangerous. Though. Who for? What do you mean? Well, she's already got one ear, now she's after yours. <laughs> Amy, she's an English woman alone in a foreign country. I must go. David, I warn you, if you go, I shall take all my clothes off, I shall go downstairs and I shall ring the fire alarm. Now, if you start tampering with that fire alarm, we could all be in... <laughs> we could all be in a lot of trouble. <laughs> Linda. Over here. Oh, have no fear. David's here. Oh. Hello, Linda. Hello. Oh. Alone at last, Linda. Yes. Except for him. Yes. Pardon? <laughs> On the balcony. Oh, do you mean that actually is, is somebody 
somebody out there. Of course there is. Oh, well, well, shouldn't we... Shouldn't we send for Robert? No! If Robert found a man on the balcony, it'd be a terrible scene. Oh. Well, aren't you going to go and look? Oh, yes. Yes, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go and look. Look, if there's any trouble, Linda, just switch all the lights on and scream like murder, would you? It's, uh, it's probably just a shadow. You're very brave. Yes. <laughs> David, thank God it's you. I thought there was a man in there. No. <laughs> Sorry, me. What are you doing out here? Well, I'm keeping watch. Linda is a damned attractive woman. The whale Nacho was looking at her, you can't be too careful. <laughs> it's all right, Linda. It's, uh, it's Robert. Robert? What are you doing <laughs> on the balcony? Oh, oh, yeah, taking in the uh, night air, breathing in the Bougainvillea, listening to the cicadas. You're all right, Linda. Yes, of course I'm all right. Of course, the fire alarm. Captain's a drill. What, at this time of night? Well, if that alarm's going, it could mean some... Oh, my God! Amy, quick! I want a towel! <laughs> Program changes for this evening on Granada in a moment, replacing the advertised adventure with Magnum. There'll be a TVI special report on the Libyan crisis, followed at half past eight by an episode of Freshfields. And later on tonight, there'll be an extended edition of the news at ten. <laughs>